hey, check it out. I just got my first CNC. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set it up. Stay tuned and hit that subscribe button. So a little bit of housekeeping right away. When I pulled my rails out of the box, I noticed they had a little bit of a rock to them. Luckily, there's a very simple solution. All you have to do is loosen the bolts on the top of both sides of one rail and then again on the bottom. And then once you stand it back up, gravity allows the rails to settle into their original position. And they may have shifted because of, you know, the things that happen when you ship something. The next part is you simply tighten the bolts on top and then here's where it really matters. You have to shift it to the edge of your work table, but don't shift it the entire way off the table. You have to leave the foot partially on the table because that is what is maintaining those rails in their squared position. So first just tighten the outermost bolt on the bottom. Once you do that, you're in the clear and you can pull it the whole way off the table and tighten the second one. Once you put it back up onto your flat work surface, you'll see there's no more rock and you're good to go. I began pre-drilling my holes just in one corner so that that could act as a pivot point before I squared up the rest of the machine. This is my least favorite type of head to have on a fastener, but such is life. Grab your best flathead screwdriver and just drive these in by hand. If you have a shorter screwdriver, that would be your best bet. I wanted to talk specifically and very briefly about what comes in terms of the cables. So you get this power box and in a Ziploc baggie comes four cables and the power cord. They're all labeled perfectly. M0, M1, M2, and of course, M3. On the other ends, a Y1 and a Y2, an X and a Z. Here's the other Y. And as you'll notice, this Y1 is super long, whereas Y2 is super short. And you can see there's numbers all along the back, so you just match the slot. This will be Y2 if I mount my box on this side. And then this rail over here is going to be Y1, which is especially long. Perfect to be able to reach all the way from the power box, which I'm going to mount underneath all the way over here. And then these other two cables are for the X rail and the Z, which is going to be for your uh, router. This is your Z because it moves up and down. So here's the connector for that.
want to see under the hood? I'll show you what I did with my wires. So we just have them tucked up under there. Goes through a hole in that middle two by four and then travels all the way over to the other side to get plugged into the controller. I installed a power strip underneath my table because I really wanted it to look neat and tidy without wires hanging everywhere. So with this current setup as it is, the wires for the monitor, one, two, three wires going back through this main larger opening that I made about halfway back, it's not allowing me to get the monitor on the mount, which goes right here. So I may rework that. Here's a good tip for you that I didn't know before I started. Probably should have scooched the machine back a little bit further this is a 49 inch deep table. Um, there is a couple inches of spare room behind it. So if you plan to put your machine a little further back from the edge, because this hole is running into the two by four structure below. And so it's a little bit trickier to make it bigger to allow for more wiring, but hey, you live and you learn. Infinity recommends raising up this part just by twisting the spindle up here and getting it about halfway up. This is the part that holds your router. And now it is time to use the Z slider mounting bolts to get this mounted. It's exciting. Okay, so they recommend using the center hole mount. And so this, if you look at the bottom, there's only one hole to choose from down here. So that tells me that I would have to start maybe with one of those screws and that makes the rest make sense. So get that one lined up. little friendly uh, tip that I learned because of my own error. Make sure your Allen wrench is in as deep as it can go in the head of the bolt. Otherwise you may strip it and you're gonna have issues later. Now that we have our Z slider mounted and installed on the X rail, it's time to lower it all the way down to prepare to install the Makita router that Onefinity recommends you use. Open up the mount for the router by loosening a nut on the side and keep the power cord towards the left side. The next thing we need to do is get our cord contained for our router. With as much movement that a CNC has, cord and cable management is extremely important. Onefinity came up with a way to manage the cord for the router by having you tuck it into a slot that is contained right under this cover that you see here. All you need to do is loosen the bolts and there will be a channel inside that you can lay the cord into perfectly and keep it contained. Just make sure the majority of your router cord is facing towards the back. And once you get it locked in the channel, just fasten the bolts again, nice and snug. And then you'll be able to connect your two cables that go from your X rail to your Z slider. And 
if this is another power cord that'll have to go down that hole and plug into our power strip below. 